Well, next stop on the Fallout Tour, Zion Methodist Church here in Las Vegas. I could go to Zion National Park, which is about, oh, maybe two or three hours away. Let's see, how much is gas? You know what? I've been there twice already. So I'll just uh, take the easy way here and leave Zion National Park snow globe at Zion Methodist Church. There we go. Okay, and here's the snow globe. Ah, such a good snow globe. All right. There we go. And Sunset Sassarellas. Preparing lives for eternity. Good words. Okay, let's see who gets it. Well, anyway, in the Honest Hearts DLC, there is one character who just stands out and, and gives a great performance, and that is Joshua Graham. In Honest Hearts, he is the heart. Uh, for more on Joshua Graham, is the man who does his voice. Ladies and gentlemen, Fallout fans, Keith Zarabajka. Zarabajka. Did I get his name right? Zarabajka, okay, thanks. You voice Joshua Graham in the... Fallout New Vegas is on his heart's downloadable content, so that means uh, people pay like $5 extra to play uh, more of the game or go to a new part of the game. Right. And you play a character who I find uh, he's very memorable. Well, I'm glad to hear that. You know, it's like it wasn't a very big job for me. I mean, I worked, you know, several days on it, you know, as a voice actor. Oh, my God. 11, 12 years ago now, you know, and I don't believe that I've done anything on it since, you know, that was new. I've done other stuff, you know, for the uh, fallout sort of crew, but um, that was a kind of bit for, for Joshua Graham, but evidently it had a lot of residents. I know people have, uh, they, they, they actually write to me a lot about it. So I'm, um, you know, yes. I'm pleased, but uh, as I said, I, I didn't have that, that much to do with it other than recording the voices, you know. Well, you give that character, well, you, you make him speak. You That's what they pay me for. I know, you can call another job, but you certainly gave a, a character who's very worth respect. Okay, so Mark. Joshua Graham, he comes off as dignified, faithful, uh, religious to the Mormon faith. He wants peace, but he, he kills because he feels he has to, to bring peace. He, he's a real total badass. I mean... He was Caesar's uh, uh, legate or leader. You know, he led the Hoover Dam raid, but, uh, well, he failed. And, well, he got thrown into the river while being burned. And he miraculously shows up in Zion National Park four years later, which is like hundreds of miles no northeast in Utah. That's amazing. Well, that's what they wrote. And he does have some of the best quotes, like, uh, like uh, he says, God can't do all the work. That makes it. That makes us think. Okay, well, God's watching, but if we want to get anything done, we got to do it ourselves. We have to do it ourselves. You know, okay. I know when uh, when when people ask if he falls, he says every day. Some days are harder than others. So, how do you create a character who feels like he's always in pain, yet he remains so focused? You can only do so much, honestly. I mean, the the, the artists do a lot of it, you know, and but in terms of the voice. You have to be, you have to be able to be understood, but at the same, so it's like, you can't go, that's why I tell my acting classes. The first thing you have to do is be seen and be heard. You know, most people who aren't actors have no idea what actors do. And in this, and in these cases, you know, usually what you do is you, um, when you're presented with a script, you break it down. The Russian acting teacher said, beats, B-I-T-S. You break it down into little sort of more digestible pieces, you know, so you don't try to do it all at once. But what happens in um, when you're working on a, on a game like this, mm -hmm. uh, like Fallout New Vegas for this character, you're presented with a series of lines that you then are told, well, he's in pain here, he's angry here, he's whatever, and you just do three, usually an ABC take, you know, one, one, two, three of each, 
and uh, you give them different choices on it. And uh, you try to find what, and then they actually put the arcs together for you. So it's like you often, you don't work with another person except for the director and the engineer, you know, and sometimes there's a writer on the line. Often when you're recording these things, in fact, almost, I don't think I've ever worked on a video game uh, unless it was in, um, unless we were doing uh, performance uh, capture, you know, in which you're like dotted in suits and you're in a volume, uh, which I did for like Halo 4 and uh, L.A. Noir uh, and Dead Space. Um, okay, you don't work I'm, with I'm familiar with the work of Andy Serkis and my mother is also a mime, so <laughs> she teaches that kind of movement. It's still acting, you know, uh, yes. whatever, however you may say it. Like for this, I did not do it for, for Joshua Graham. All I did were the lines. So you never work with another actor unless you do, you're doing performance capture. Then you will often usually work with other actors. And that's how you do it. And they say, all right, I want this line to where your voice crackles. And you go, it never stops burning. You know, say, or, it never stops burning. Or it never stops burning. And you give them three choices, you know, and then they take them and then they they kind of build the character uh, from the lines that you do. So that's what you do. And, and most of these games, that's what that's what you do. OK, so did they re shown any character art of, of Joshua Graham? Do you know what he was going to look like before you voiced him? Uh, yeah, they showed me a picture, you know, of what it was like. So the Honest Hearts DLC, it takes place in Zion National Park and did you get familiar with that area and as well as the Mormon faith, which is a part of Joshua's character? It's in the lines, okay. you know, they don't really give you much of a backstory. They'll give you a little bit, you know, some of it. And then basically it comes out while you're reading it, you know, uh, as you're talking about. A Mormon and, a, he, uh, and, he's, and, he, and he's a failed general who, well, got burned and thrown into the <clears throat> river as punishment. Right. They'll, they'll tell you things like that or that this is where you get burned and thrown into the river as punishment. Can you give us several screams of being burned, you know, or some of you know being thrown into the river. Like you'll do a bunch of things at the end, usually of a session uh, in which you do what they call efforts in which you're being burned and you're falling from different heights or you're being burned at different intensities. So you do a smaller, medium and a, and, a, and a larger burn. And I have been several times, I've been designed national park. I, I was on a tour from the theater company, I, the organic, that I was in in, uh, in Chicago, we toured from uh, Portland, Oregon, through uh, Moscow, Idaho, and uh, Sun Valley, would that be it? Yeah, Sun Valley. And uh, then we played Ogden, Utah, and Salt Lake City, and Provo, and St. George, Utah, and uh, Richfield, Utah, which was a trip, you know, because people came from 100 miles to see the show, it was Adventures of Huckleberry Finn, and I was Huckleberry Finn. It was a beautiful production. And I remember someone gave, gave me a, a, an inscribed Book of Mormon and when I was playing uh, the character in Richfield, Utah, after a performance. It was very touching. So Honest Hearts, yeah, it takes place in, you know, Zion. Actually, on the first time I did this, I actually dressed up as, you know, the Joshua Graham character and just walked around. But, you know, uh, wearing a heavy vest, wearing bandages. What is this? Uh, you, you get asked about that, especially by security. So, uh, I know you want to cosplay in real life, but... Uh, you might look crazy doing it, but thankfully Vault Boy suit, uh, you're not going to look that crazy. Yes, well, I would have been went to Zion National Park twice because I do this ritual where I leave snow globes that are found in the game, you know, hmm. in their real life locations. And, well, that's wow. what, what brought me to Zion National that Park. dedication. So I did that, you know, that road trip. Inspired by Fall at New Vegas. I, I have never done that. Um, I, I used snow globes in a, a, a short film that I produced uh, that my oldest boy, Jack Sarabica, directed called The Second Coming about aliens who've been sent to end the human race. Uh, but the pilot has fallen in love with uh, with human com comedy and um, it, it kind of degenerates from there. It's so how did you come to do voices for Obsidian and Bethesda, you know, in Fallout games? I got submitted by my agents and they ended up hiring me, you know, huh. uh, but I've prior to, I'd done a lot of video games. I've done video games since oh, the mid nineties. I think the first time I did a video game, I was um, played Boris Yeltsin in something called uh, attack America, you know, and it was kind of fun. Um, but I've done, uh, I had done well over a hundred games, I think. Um, different kinds of characters. One of the first ones that I did was called Escape from Monkey Island, and I played some day Hispanic florist named Bowsley. 
it was very funny. That's all I can say. Okay, so you say you've done over a hundred roles. Uh, I would say, yeah, that's pretty. And, and which one do would you feel is your most remembered or most memorable? Well, the one that people seem to remember the most is Joshua Graham, which always Great. surprised me. You know, uh, I have to say, but the one that 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 has stuck out strongest in my mind in terms of games that I've done was the Erdidact in uh, in Halo Four. We are forerunners, guardians of all that exists. Very long. I have a number of very long speeches in there. That was a fun one to shoot. We did that as performance capture. And that was like many, many sessions, actually, both as performance capture and, and just vo voice recording because they changed a lot of the script as we went along. But it was cool. You know, and I, I would be dressed in the little Andy Circus sort of outfit, you know, with dots all over my every every muscle line in my face uh, and a little helmet and that had a, a camera out here. And uh, I would look like a complete dweeb in it. And then I would step into the volume and look at the, at the Im image on the monitor. And I was this 20 foot tall alien. And it was pretty cool. You're an actor. And later you're, you're like this, you know, space God. I think people really look up to Joshua. Is he like a gold, good role model to look up to? Uh, so he comes off as a hardworking, faithful person. He's a hardworking, faithful person, but he is a mass killer. So I'm yes, not sure. I, I know. I don't, we don't want to condone killing, but he seems to only want to do it to bring peace. Seems to, you know. Uh, yeah. You know, but uh, killing is killing, you know. Yeah. He's leading a tribe uh, who's at war with another tribe, and they might may face. Oh, he's at war against Caesar, isn't he? I, yes. He says he's things like, "I want to have my revenge against him, against yes. Caesar. I want to call it my own." Yes, and he's my white leg. God's anger to justify the things I've done. He's declaring war against the White Legs tribe, where well, seem to want to be in Caesar's legion, and either you know listen to Daniel and leave the Zion or stay in Zion, but they have to kill the white legs. That's the one he wants, choice he wants. Because he feels that's how he gets peace. Yeah. Well, as he says, I don't enjoy killing, but when done righteously, it's just a chore like any other. I guess he feels he's at war and war never changes. Yeah. Although he does say the thing, lastly, waging war against good people is bad for the soul. This may not seem important to you now, but it's the most important thing I've said. Yeah, well, he's certainly at, at war with some bad people. I mean, apparently they burned his uh, previous town of New Canaan. Well, when the walls come tumbling down, when you lose everything you have, you always have family. Well, I guess it's not an easy choice, but this just happens in times of war. You don't like to do it, but you got to do it. It's true. War is hell. War movie making is heck. Thanks for taking the time to speak with me. Any Thank final you, words? No, other than keep the peace. And I pray for the safety of all good people who come to Zion, even Gentiles. But remember, we can't expect God to do all the work. Anyway, thanks for joining me. I'm uh, making a follow-up documentary, uh, The Fallout New Vegas, just talking with voice actors more. And uh, actually, last uh, Friday, I was at at the Good Springs party, uh, which was a Fallout New Vegas celebration day. Yeah, did you know about that? No. Yeah, so the Pioneer Saloon in Good Springs put out the word that they're having a Fallout celebration, and, well, uh, hundreds of people showed up. Where's, where's Good Springs, if I may ask? Oh, Good Springs. Uh, it's actually one of the locations in Fallout New Vegas, you know, outside the d d downloadable content. Uh, Okay, so starting from uh, the I-15 North, you go past Prim, you make a uh, left at Gene, and you're in Good Springs. Okay. Yeah, it's outside of Las Vegas. And uh, there are quite a few Joshua Graham cosplayers out there, people dressed as that uh, guy in the riot vest and, and bandages. And then they were, they were wrapped in bandages, swathed yes. in bandages, no doubt. Yeah. yeah, people do that at, you know, you know, comic geek conventions. And yeah, there, I think I counted three of them when I went there. Hmm. All right. So, so my prepared questions. Uh, anyway, thank you for joining. Uh, you're also busy with other projects. So what do you have going on? Uh, plays, audio plays? Uh, uh, right now, I'm, I, I, I've been working on uh, 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 a Netflix series called, uh, it's a, 
uh, cartoons called Bad Crimes. And it's a, it's kind of a comedic uh, thing. And I can't, I'm still bound by an NDA, but I can say I'm in it, you know. Okay, I know a movie called The Bad Guys came out. Uh, yeah, this is called Bad Crimes. Bad Crimes, and it's animated? Uh, yeah. All right. Uh, uh, the Bad Guys was about, you know, animal criminals su supposedly trying to reform. <clears throat> right, I, I didn't see it. But okay. That, yeah. Okay, yeah, well, I know you're under an NDA, but is Bad Crimes kind of like that? You know, people committing crimes and reforming? Uh, yes, yes, but it's more about... Uh, the uh, the law enforcement side of it but you get to meet the other side as well ah so yeah. we're seeing it so we're seeing much of it from the good guys going after the criminals and from the criminals perspective. much much of it yes uh like i said do i that's about all i can say okay yeah. kind of like the wire the what it's a show uh the wire about the oh the wire there. oh yeah um uh, no. no okay yeah. well okay well you know what maybe i'll check it out when it comes out uh, yeah me too i haven't seen it yet i just have done you know uh recordings for it yeah. okay uh who's the showrunner uh, who's attached oh my god uh, uh, what's their previous work i don't know you know i actually don't know he's a young woman uh let's see what her let me see if i can find her um yeah i'm pretty curious maybe this could be the next big thing um could be you know um uh, I mean, I, I've met them online, you know, and that's that's about it, you know. Uh, uh, I know Justin Kirk, who was in, uh, I believe, Arrested Development, is in it. Um, okay. Nicole Silverberg, that's her name. She's Nicole the showrunner. Silver. Yeah. All right. Uh, any? Okay. Uh, well, thanks. How about we just get to uh, the Fallout stuff? <clears throat> okay. Anyway, so you voiced... Uh, it's, it's from Mike Judge and Greg Daniels. Oh. You know, yeah. She, oh, but so. uh, Nicole is the uh, the creator and the showrunner. Oh, uh, and, and the creator of Beavis and Butthead is involved. I, King I guess, of the Hill. I guess so, yeah. Okay, so looks like it's got some uh, names attached. Okay. Well, looks like it might take off. You give them many that's, qualities. That's what they pay me for, you know. Okay, that's, I know you can call another job, but you certainly gave a, a character who's very worth respect. And, and as I said, people drove hundreds of miles to go to Good Springs, Josh, dressed as Joshua Graham. I mean, but this was a real place, not something that was sort of online, this Good Springs convention. Uh, it, it, it's a real place. It's well over 100 years old. It's a very historic place. So you give it a visit when you drive, go to Vegas. Maybe, you know, uh, I don't go to Vegas very often. So well, it, it is on the way to Las Vegas. So anyway, Joshua Graham. Last time I was there was for a super convention. Um, I, I used snow globes in a, a, a short film that I produced uh, that my oldest boy, Jack Sarabica, directed called The Second Coming about aliens who've been sent to, uh, who just, uh, who've been sent to end the human race. Uh, but the pilot has fallen in love with uh, with human com comedy and, um, it, it kind of degenerates from there. It's yeah, I'm, a, I'm actually watching a show about that. It's called Solar Opposites. It's on Hulu. Yeah. It's from the creator of Rick and Morty. It's about these aliens who are, well, their planet's is destroyed, so they go find uninhabited worlds. But one family of these aliens end up on Earth on accident. And, uh, you know, one alien wants to leave, but the rest of them just enjoy Earth culture. Well, that's that's sort of the opposite. This is one who's like the crew wants to destroy, is sent to destroy Earth, and he try, goes out of his way to convince his commander not to destroy Earth. You know, okay. and they at the end they they plummet down to Earth, and and that's that's as far as we've gotten with it. But we, we we've we've done one. It's won some awards in uh, film festivals recently. Okay, so yeah, uh, I hide the snow globes and I put them on Instagram, Twitter, Reddit, and I get people to find them. In fact, when I went to Good Springs, I. Well, I, I met someone who actually went looking for my snow globe. Uh, one of them, I actually did he find it, him or she find him. Uh, well, it's more like uh, two months after I did my last trip. I was I happened to be in Vegas again, and I picked up that snow globe because eh, no one looked got it. But it turns out she found out about it months later and was like, "Hey, where is it?" Then she ended up at the Good Spring <laughs> party, and I was like, "Okay, here you go. You want it. You want this." Hmm. Yes, and. And of course, uh, I also did she find it. I gave it to her. 
Oh, you gave it to her. Yeah, the I thought you put it, snow globe. I thought you'd put it in some secret location in Zion. I, I kind of did. Uh, there's this mining facility that kind of reminds me of the big MT area in the game, and uh, I left it there in the, in the sunset sunset sarsaparilla snow bottle caps. Yeah, but I found it two months after I did that snow globe road trip. I, I kept it. Then I then she hits me up on Instagram saying, "Oh, I tried looking for it." Okay. Then she happened to be at that Good Springs party last Friday. I was like, "Okay, you're getting it." And I found her. She got the snow globe. You you found her. She didn't uh, find it, right? Uh, yes. Yeah. And uh, of course, there's. I also put this thing on Reddit and Instagram, Twitter, where I just leave a bunch of Good Springs snow globes outside the cemetery, since you can actually find a Good Springs snow globe in the cemetery. Yeah, that caught on, and yeah. Where's the cemetery? Uh, it's when you make that, it's when you make that uh, turn at Gene and you go on that road towards Good Springs. It's just before the Pioneer Saloon up the hill. Never, never having been there, I would have no idea where. Okay, it was. so yeah, th those are kind of things we just share as Fallout fans. Okay, mm -hmm. uh, back to my prepared questions. Uh, so how did you come to do voices for Obsidian and Bethesda? You know, in Fallout games or other. I got submitted by my agents, and they ended up hiring me. War movie making is heck, you know. Well, I, uh, I think we covered enough here. Uh, thanks for taking the time to speak with me. Uh, okay, well, thank you, Max. You know, have a great day, great evening, and I, okay. I hope that you got what you wanted out of this interview. I think I did. We talked about Zion, we talked about Joshua, and uh, I plan on putting this documentary out maybe next year, you know. Just want to do, do the road trip again. Yeah, there, there are some, guy I talked to, I don't know, like, since sometime in the last six months, uh, he did a, a some sort of documentary on Joshua Graham, and it had 1.5 million hits. Oh wait, whoa, whoa! On YouTube, if I may ask, uh, does, does, is is his name T.K. Mantis? It may have been. I'm not sure. I know there's Oxhorn. Uh, I know T.K. Mantis was at uh, the Good Springs party. Yeah, I I don't know if he was. I I imagine if he was that into it, he was at the Good Springs party. But I I just uh, I interviewed him for a while. I, he was somewhat taken aback that I wasn't an actual Mormon, but I, I went, that's, you know, just the part I play. Uh, yeah, I'm seeing some uh, right here. There's Red Beak Raven, Wisefish. This one has like 2 million views. Uh, Papa Boy. That could have been it. I don't know. I don't, I don't remember what his name was. I thought his name, I thought his name was Josh, but I might be mistaken. You know? uh, yeah, there's Oxhorn. Um, uh, yeah, and of course, there's just a bunch of, uh, you know, clips of Joshua, so well, could have been any one of these. Yeah, well, whatever. Just thought you might know him since you're pretty into the wiki of it, you know. Well, true, but I don't, uh, I like the character, but, you know, I'm not one to you know, look at all these fan videos. I'm, I'm kind of making one myself. That keeps me busy. Well, good, good, as well you should. I, I don't see many fan videos. Unless, if people send them to me, I'll look at it, you know. Okay, well, I think we covered enough, so I'm going to end recording. Oh, so, any thank final you, words? No, other than keep the peace, you know. Thank you. And I pray for the safety of all good people who come to Zion, even Gentiles. But remember, we can't expect God to do all the work. Good words.